Today's episode is going to be about Maharana Pratap. Maharana Pratap was the ruler of Mewar of the Sisodia clan of Rajputs and he was born to Maharana Uday Singh II and Jayawantabai. Maharana Pratap is widely regarded as a great hero and one of India's most famous freedom fighters and he's regarded as a freedom fighter is because he spent his entire life fighting alone and fighting an uphill battle where all the kingdoms and all the kings around him were capitulating and were submitting and surrendering to the Mughal Empire. He was the only one that kept fighting. In 1567, when Prince Pratap Singh was only 27, the capital of Mewar, Chittor, was surrounded by the Mughal forces of Emperor Akbar. Maharana Uday Singh decided to leave Chittor and move his family to Gogunda rather than surrender to the Mughals. After the death of Maharana Uday Singh, Rani Dhirbhai wanted her son Jagmal to succeed him. But senior courtiers preferred Pratap as they realized that Jagmal would be disastrous for the kingdom and Pratap would make a much better king. And eventually the courtiers' wishes prevailed and Maharana Pratap was made the new king. The Mughal Emperor Akbar had control of large areas of Mewar but was still intent on securing a stable route to Gujarat through Mewar. When Maharana Pratap was crowned king in 1572, Akbar sent a number of envoys and diplomatic missions asking the Rana to become a subject of the Mughal Empire just like many other Rajput leaders had done in the region. The last of these missions was headed by Raja Man Singh who was the brother-in-law of Akbar himself. Maharana Pratap when he found out about Raja Man Singh became very angry that his fellow Rajput was aligned with someone who had forced the subjugation of so many Rajputs and was angry at the fact that he had aligned himself with the people that had forced so much death and destruction upon the Rajputs and upon his culture and therefore he refused to the terms of Raja Man Singh and refused to surrender to Rakhbar. Therefore war became inevitable. In preparation of the war and long after the war, Maharana Pratap himself undertook several penances not only because his finances forced him to do so but also because he wished to remind himself and all of his subjects why they were undertaking this pain. To win back their freedom, their right to exist as they wished to win back their culture and their homeland. It is also important to remember that during this point, all Rajput kings and kingdoms around him were crumbling and surrendering to the Mughal Empire except for him. Thus, the Battle of Haldighati was fought on 18th of June 1576 between Maharana Pratap and Akbar's forces led by Man Singh of Amber. Unfortunately, the Mughal army found a traitor in Pratap's brother Shakti Singh who told them about secret passes in the Haldighati. After a fierce battle that lasted more than three hours, Pratap found himself wounded and the day lost. Maharana Pratap's chieftain Man Singh Jhala exchanged armors with Maharana Pratap to confuse the Mughal army. This allowed Maharana Pratap to make his escape and live to fight another day. Maharana Pratap's favorite horse Cheta, he also perished in this battle. He was killed by Mughal archers. Even though the Mughals won the day, this was not a very decisive victory for them because Maharana Pratap was still able to make his escape and he was still out there resisting the Mughals. So the Mughals knew that as long as Maharana Pratap was alive and was resisting, they would not be able to have a stable Mewar and a stable route through Mewar to Gujarat. As a result of this battle, however, most of Mewar except for the hills fell in Mughal hands, but Maharana Pratap did not give up fighting. However, the relentless attacks of the Mughal army had left Maharana Pratap's army weaker and he barely had enough money to keep it going. It is said that his children had to eat bread made of grass at one point and watching his children suffer and watching them starving broke his heart, cracked his will and he thought about surrendering to the Mughals at one point. He also wrote a letter to Akbar where he expressed a willing to maybe surrender. Akbar then showed this letter to another Rajput in his court, Prithviraj Rathor. Prithviraj Rathor requested and obtained Akbar's permission to send a letter back to Pratap to confirm whether it was indeed Pratap who had written this letter. But what he wanted to do was to convince Maharana Pratap to not submit and not surrender to the Mughals. So he wrote a letter back and in the letter he wrote a very famous poem and when Maharana Pratap read the poem from Prithviraj Rathor, it strengthened his will and it reminded him of what he was fighting for and he decided not to surrender to the Mughals after all and continue fighting. It was at this time that one of his ministers, Bhama Shah, came and offered Maharana Pratap all of his wealth, a sum that would enable Maharana Pratap to support an army of 25,000 soldiers for 12 years. Thus, he was able to continue fighting the Mughals. Mughal pressure on Mewar relaxed after 1579. 
following rebellions in Bengal, Bihar and Mirza Hakim's incursion into the Punjab. In 1582, Maharana Pratap was able to attack and occupy the Mughal post at Dewar. In 1585, Akbar moved to Lahore and remained there for the next few years watching the situation in the northwest. This allowed Maharana Pratap to recover a lot of the lost territory in western Mewar including Kumbalgar, Udaipur and Gogunda. During this period, he also built a new capital, Chavand, near modern Dungarpur. Maharana Pratap, through his relentless efforts, eventually managed to free most of Mewar except for the capital, Chittor. In 1597, however, Maharana Pratap was seriously injured in a hunting accident and he passed away aged 56 on January 29, 1597. A question that has been asked recently is why do we speak of Maharana Pratap? What did Maharana Pratap do? That was so great. You will see this in the media and you will see this in, you know, the leftist circles often asking, why do we celebrate the Rajputs? Why do we celebrate Maharana Patap? He did not win the Battle of Haldi Ghati. He lost a lot of his area and it's not like he expanded his area outside of Mewar. So why do we really celebrate Maharana Patap? And the answer to that question is the reason we celebrate Maharana Patap and the reason we revere him is because he represents really well the Hindu struggle and the Hindu spirit and the Hindus battle for survival. He represents the spirit of being beaten down repeatedly but not giving up. Being at your lowest but not giving up. He watched every Rajput kingdom around him crumble and fall but he did not give up. His spirit cracked but it did not break. He never stopped fighting for his civilization and for his culture. He represents perfectly our culture and our civilization's struggle for survival, struggle for self-determination and for freedom. He represents what we are as a people and as a culture and what we should always aspire to be, indomitable. Again guys, thank you very much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed today's episode on Maharana Patap. If you did, please leave a like on the episode. Please leave a thumbs up. Helps the show out, helps me out. And also, if you enjoyed today's episode, you can make sure to subscribe to the show's channel down below. Also, you can suggest in the comment sections below what you thought about the episode. All right, guys, again, thank you very much for watching today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you for the next episode. And until then, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you soon.